If you have a TI-83, finding the inverse norm and uh, inverse T is a bit trickier than what you can do with TI-84. So let me explain how to do that. Uh, first, the inverse norm is not that bad. So let's think about the following case where, let's say, you're trying to find the Z critical when you have a right tail test and your significance level, uh, significance level, which is uh, alpha, that's given as 0 0.05. Well, 0 0.05 is the area of the tail, and because it's right tail is the right side tail, and you're trying to find this value that corresponds to uh, the boundary of this right tail. Now, uh, that means you're trying to find out from negative infinity to this z critical so that this much will give you 0 0.95 because uh, if you subtract, we know that the normal distribution has the entire area as 1 and therefore the uh, if this is 0 0.05, 1 minus 0 0.05 would give you 0 0.95, right? So, so that's what we want to know. And that function is what's called the inverse norm. So inverse norm, you put in the area, and that will tell you what this z critical value should be. So that's quite straightforward. And uh, this is not that different from TI-84. So let me show you how to do that uh, second distribution. You go to inverse norm and put 0.95 and then enter. And that's how you get that. Okay. Now let me show you what to do if you have a two-tailed test at this, with the same significance level. So if you're trying to find z critical for two-tailed test with alpha equal to 0 0.05, what that means is that this much will be half of 0 0.05, so it will be 0 0.025, and this will also be 0 0.025. Now, uh, then you, ha you have two choices. Uh, one is to say, well, uh, the z critical, well, one will be the negative of each other, right? So this will be positive, that will be negative. One way to do it would be to subtract 1 minus 0 0.025. Uh, often I just say 1 minus alpha over 2. That's a quick way to remember what to do when you have a two-tailed test, uh, which gives you 0 0.975. So we're looking for this z critical uh, value uh, when you have the left side is 0 0.975. So that's what you plug into the calculator. You do a second distribution, uh, inverse norm of 0.975. However, if you understand what we're doing pretty well, then you can also do the following. You can just see, say that hey, this is 0 0.025. So I'll just find the inverse norm. Uh, instead of 0 0.975, I'll just do 0.025. 0.025. Then what happens is that if you enter, it gives you the negative value. So you didn't have to convert it. Uh, you, you can just use this original value. Uh, but then the value that you get is negative 1.96 uh, rather than positive 1.96. So you will have to know that the positive one is 1.96. All right. So that's how you do the inverse norm. Now the, the trickier part is uh, when you have inverse t because unfortunately uh, you don't have inverse t in TI-83+. plus. So uh, back to the same kind of example, let's just say that the sum sample size is 20 and you don't have access to the, uh, you, you don't know the population standard deviation so you're forced to use the t distribution instead of the z uh, the, the normal distribution. Uh, that means that you have the value of you have to find the va critical value of t. Right? So that uh, you have to figure out what that is. 
Mm. So t critical uh, with say alpha equal to 0 0.05 and if you're doing the right tail, so let's say right tail, and this is actually the t curve which is, it looks almost like a normal distribution except that it's slightly, slightly wider so that uh, the critical value would be bigger. So remember the one that we figured out was uh, I think for the right tail case was 1.64 or something. Uh, the value that you get will be bigger than 1.6 something, okay? But anyways, uh, we're, we're looking for this area to be 0 0.05 and what is this T critical? That's our question, right? So this, this point is the qu question that we want. Uh, okay, so uh, let me show you the second distribution and if you search up, you won't see T, inverse T anywhere, unfortunately. So what do you do? Well, uh, there are two ways. One would be like just applying TCDF over and over again if, until you get some uh, good enough approximation. And there's another one which you let the calculator find it, but it's a bit more involved. So uh, you may try to learn it or you may just stick to the first method, although uh, it's a little bit time consuming. So what I propose is that you just do TCDF and uh, again, uh, you want the area from negative infinity to here to be 0 0.95, right? Uh, because this is 0 0.05, this must be 0 0.95. So what you do is put negative 1,000. So you're supposed to put negative infinity, but uh, negative 1,000 is good enough approximation. So just put 1,000 when you have to put infinities in, in, the, in the distributions, okay? So from negative 1,000 to some value, and I know that uh, 1.6 something was the z-score, uh, Z critical value, so T critical should be a little bit bigger. So let's put something at 1.9, uh, 9, 1. It's like it's good to have like three digits. And then, comma, uh, the difference is that for TCDF, you have to provide the uh, degrees of freedom, and it has to be one less than the sample size. Since our sample size is 20, degrees of freedom is 19. You put that in, and it says 0.96. So uh, we went too far, so it has to be decreasing. So what do you do? Well, you do second, enter, to get the same input again, and then you put something like 8.5, and enter again, see if it, oh, it's still not good enough. So let's do, I know that it should be bigger than 1.65, so let's do 1.7. So second entry, say 1.7, one. Oh, okay, so that's slightly less, and then you go now slightly higher. It has to be something between 1.85 and 1.71, and uh, it seems like it has to be much closer to 1.71, so let's try 1.75. That's pretty close, right? So, uh, and just keep going until you have a satisfying answer. So let's put 1.73. Oh, that's even closer. Okay, so second entry, and then you have uh, 2.5 maybe. Oh, made a mistake. I uh, forgot to put a comma there because I had extra digits. So I have to put comma 19, enter, and that's slightly small, so I would do something like uh, 2, 8. That's even closer. Two nine. Okay, I mean, that's, that's really close to 0.95, right? So I would take 1.729 as the inverse T. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Uh, now, uh, if you want the calculator to figure this out on its own, here's what you can do. Um, so you can use the uh, graphing. So you can put the second distribution TCDF, 
you put the same thing it's negative 1000 to some unknown value x with 19 as the degrees of freedom and then you want so what you want is you want the tcdf of negative infinity until x with 19 degrees of freedom to equal to 0 0.95 right so uh, how do you uh, ask the calculator to figure that out. Well, you just make a function to be minus 0 0.95 so that when this is equal to 0, uh, that is the value in question that we're trying to find. Okay, So we want to put minus 0.95 as our function. And when you do this, uh, it's important that you change the window size so that uh, you have the calculator calculating uh, within some window. You don't want it to be calculating too many different values. So uh, click the window and by the way, you're really just interested in uh, between negative 1 and 1. Like it's, You just need something uh, close to 0, right? So you can put like negative 1 and 1 or even you can put like point, negative 0. 0.5 to positive 0. 0.5. That's like uh, because we really are just interested in the zeros, right? And uh, uh, the search space will be your x min and x max. And if you recall, we know that it has to be bigger than 1.6. And then uh, if you put something high, then you know that it, it shouldn't be that high. So I, I know that the value should be somewhere between 1.6 and 2. So you have this. Uh, so make sure that you're, uh, you have resized it this way. And then you graph it. takes a while to graph so um, although this is automatic uh, I'm not really sure if this is really faster than uh, doing it by hand but it's still cool to know so let's wait until okay so at least what we know is that uh, somewhere here it's negative and then somewhere here it becomes positive. Right? So uh, what you want to do is you don't have to wait for the graph to finish. You can do second calc. Oh, I do have to wait just a minute. Uh, finished. Okay. So second calc, and then you're looking for the zero, right? And then uh, you have to move the move this all the way left make because you're looking for when it's negative right you have to stop when this is negative so here uh, what y is negative right so when you see that it's negative you choose that as the left bound so we enter and then now for the right bound we move to the right I do see that this is positive whenever you see positive you enter and then uh, just for guess you just enter uh, and if you wait it's going to give you the value was it 1.729 I think let's see if it gives us the value yep it's 1.729 as just as we did it the other way so that's how you have to do the inverse T so uh, it's a bit tougher uh, either way um, you can try the graphing way or you can try the just try an error method uh, and one of them should give you the inverse t